Hey guys, so recently I posted a reaction short on YouTube and then I got tons of negative comments and I was pretty much shocked by that. So let me show you this short so that you know what I'm talking about. If you watched it already, uh, you can of course skip to the next section. When Muslims go and conquer the, the adjacent country, what do we do? We kill them all? No. The Prophet says, the first thing you do is call them to Islam. If they refuse, then tell them Allah obliged upon you to pay taxation. In return, when enemy comes and attack your country, you don't fight. We Muslims protect you. Subhanallah, for this little money? Yes. And you enjoy sitting in your homes and in your country and live your life normally. But the ruling is for Sharia. So you do not open nightclubs, you do not uh, fornicate. If they refuse, then we have to fight. And if we fight you, then we capture you, you become our slaves, and we take your land, and you take where... Because you refuse, I give you two good options. In so this person really believes that he is being reasonable and fair. That's the interesting part. So apparently, tons of my viewers agreed with the Muslim scholar in this video. I got comments like, yeah, of course, everything he said is fair and reasonable and you disagree with him, why don't you explain yourself? I thought that this was pretty much self-explanatory, but I guess it wasn't. So let me explain what I think about this video and address some comments. Number one. So the first phrase is, when we Muslims go conquer the adjacent country. What do you mean? You go and you conquer like hello this is the 21st century civilized societies want peace that's why we don't do wars of aggression anymore and of course i will see all kinds of pro-palestine nonsense in the comments saying stuff like oh how about what the jews are doing in palestine well i'm not comparing jews trying to defend their only country like a tiny strip of land that's barely visible on the map to Muslims conquering entire continents because it's ridiculous. So the rest of the video talks about what happens after the successful conquest, uh, assuming that the conquest is acceptable in the first place. Um, anybody thinks that this is fair and reasonable? Once we've been conquered, what happens? So according to this person, we have three options. We either convert to Islam uh, or we pay tax and follow the Sharia law or we become enslaved. So the most reasonable out of the three is the first one actually, because he says that we can refuse a conversion. So it's still an individual choice as it should be. But then he goes on saying that basically if you refuse conversion, it's either Sharia law or enslavement. And a lot of people in the comments focused on the benefit of the tax that would provide protection and exemption from military service. Well, that's great, but if we go back to the text of the Quran, it says there that the tax was to humble those who don't believe in Allah. But, I mean, forget about the tax. The tax is not even the main issue here. Why should anyone in the Western world be forced to follow the Sharia law? Obviously, I understand that there are different schools of thought within Islam and there are different interpretations and implementations of the Sharia, but let's look at some common examples of the Sharia law in the modern world. How about amputating limbs for theft? How about enforcing modesty and forcing women to be accompanied by male guardians in public? How about death penalty for blasphemy or apostasy? Anybody here likes that? Anybody finds that fair and reasonable? And then goes my favorite one. Are you guys ready? So the final option is enslavement. I would like to remind everyone that we have abolished slavery and we consider it to be a bad thing. I mean, at least I do. After seeing the comments section, I can't be sure of anything anymore. Um, and I can't believe I have to say this, but 
I don't think it's fair and reasonable to enslave people if they refuse to convert and or follow the Sharia law. Um, but that's just me, you know. Now, this short could have been 100% normal and beyond criticism if it was said in the past tense. Like if this Muslim scholar was saying, hey, you know, in the past, we used to do those things. We used to conquer places and then give people options like either you convert or, or you follow the Sharia or you uh, become enslaved. That was actually totally normal behavior in the past, like in the medieval ages. So if we turn the clock back, like 1000 years or even 500 years, this would sound fair and reasonable. But when you say stuff like that in the present tense um, and you try to superimpose it on the modern world, then there is a problem. It just doesn't work. One final thing. There will be comments saying, and how about the Bible? The Bible talks about slavery and stoning people. Yes, it does say that, but we don't do that. When it comes to religious texts, what matters more than the religious texts themselves is the way they're being interpreted. Because it's the interpretation that has practical implications. Nowadays, Christians and Jews don't interpret the violent passages in the Bible in a way that leads to violence. Unfortunately, for a lot of Muslims, that's different. And I know that Islam is very diverse, so this video doesn't speak for all Muslims. And a lot of modern and moderate Muslims will totally disagree with the opinion voiced in, in that video. And I saw that in the comments as well. Wow, I just made a video literally trying to explain why it's wrong to impose your religious beliefs on people and why it's wrong to enslave people. Um, yeah, that's, it's very strange.